Welcome to Electro Online. What is the minimum force required to accelerate the mass that has a weight of 60 newtons? And let's say that we start out by applying a force of 20 newtons. Is that sufficient to get the block accelerating? Understanding that the static coefficient of friction is 0.6 and the kinetic coefficient of friction is 0.5. If we assume that 20 newtons is not sufficient, you're going to need a larger force. We need to find that larger force, what's the minimum force required to accelerate the block. And then once you overcome the static friction, then of course you have to deal with kinetic friction. And then the question is, with that minimum force to get it started, what will be the acceleration afterwards for that minimum force applied? So let's go ahead and draw the forces that are acting on this block. We have the weight of the block, which is mg, which in this case is equal to 60 newtons. And then we have the normal force pushing back the normal force, which is equal to mg, which of course is also equal to 60 newtons. And then we have the friction force. Now without friction force, the block will be accelerated to the right. So that means that the friction force will act to the left. And the force friction is going to be equal to the normal force times the static coefficient of friction. And so the normal will be mg times mu sub s. And so let's see now if we can tell if there's going to be an acceleration if we only apply 20 newtons. So let's go ahead and do that. For acceleration to be greater than zero, we need F net to be greater than zero. Otherwise, if you don't have a net force, you don't have an acceleration. And we can write the equation that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. So the net force is going to be all the forces aiding minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. So that's going to be F, the force applied, minus the force due to friction, and that's going to equal mass times acceleration. So the force applied is 20 newtons, and we subtract from that the friction force, which is mg mu sub s, mg mu sub s, and that should equal ma, and again, to have an acceleration, this better be greater than zero. So we have 20 newtons minus the mass times g, which is 60 newtons, times the coefficient of static friction, which is 0.6. That's equal to ma. And notice that if I multiply that together, I can see that I get 20 newtons minus 36 newtons is equal to ma. Now, of course, I'm going to put 36 newtons in little quotation marks because Again, friction force is simply a reactionary force which can never exceed the force that causes it in the first place. So this friction force is caused by the force being applied to it. So in other words, 36 newtons is really not the result. You're going to get 20 newtons minus 20 newtons because the friction force will only equal the force that is applied to the block until the force that is applied to the block becomes greater than the maximum friction force, which is 36 newtons, and then there will be an acceleration. So therefore, there will be zero acceleration when 20 newtons is applied. So now we actually have the answer to our second question. What is the minimum force required to overcome the force of friction? And since the maximum force of friction is 36 newtons, the minimum force to apply would be 36 newtons plus a tiny little bit to get it going. So we can say that F min required is therefore equal to the force friction max. So basically what we had here, what this was the maximum friction force. And so this would then be F min would have to be at the very least 36 newtons to overcome the friction force and then the object will begin to accelerate. Once the object is accelerating, it is moving, we no longer have the static coefficient of friction now, we now have the kinetic coefficient of friction. So now once the block begins to move, so block moves, so now we realize that we have mu sub k instead of mu sub s and now we can say that F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. The net force now will be the 36 newtons applied minus the force friction due to the kinetic friction, and that equals mass times acceleration. So 36 newtons minus 
the normal force, which is mg times mu sub k, mg times mu sub k, which is equal to ma. And so we have 36 newtons minus mg, which is equal to 60 newtons, times mu sub k, which is 0 0.5, which is equal to the mass times acceleration. And that's 30 newtons, so 36 newtons minus 30 newtons is equal to ma, which means you now have a net force of 6 newtons to accelerate that. So what is the acceleration now? Realizing that we have a net force of 6 newtons, so we can say that 6 newtons is equal to m times acceleration, but instead of m, we can say that the weight is equal to mg, which means that m is equal to the weight divided by g. So instead of writing m, we're going to write 6 newtons is equal to the weight, that's 60 newtons, divided by g times a. And so it means that a is equal to g times 6 newtons divided by 60 newtons, and therefore a is equal to 0.1 g, or a is equal to 0.98 meters per second square. And let's put a line there so we don't get confused. So here what we've done is we first established that in order to have an acceleration, your net force must be greater than the maximum force that the friction force can be when you have static coefficient of friction, which was 36 newtons. So therefore, since the applied force is less, you're not going to get an acceleration. Once you have sufficient amount of force, 36 newtons, to overcome the friction force, 36 newtons plus a tiny little bit, then the object begins to accelerate. So then we realize that once the object accelerates, the net force is going to be the force applied, 36 newtons, minus the force due to friction when we have kinetic coefficient of friction, which is 30 newtons, so we have a net force of 6 newtons. Once we have a net force of 6 newtons, we know that's equal to the mass times acceleration, so then instead of writing mass, we write weight divided by g, solve for a, which is g times 6 over 60, or 110 g, which is 0.98 meters per second square once the block begins to slide, and now you're only contending with the kinetic coefficient of friction instead of the static coefficient of friction. Again, another way of looking at friction, forces, acceleration, and Newton's laws to get us a better understanding. And that's how it's done.